<laughs> All right, what up, what up, what up, everybody? Tiff, say what up. What up? She travels a whole lot, <laughs> and she's just getting started, really, right? So mm-hmm. you're in Oklahoma. I would, uh, everybody would crush me if I didn't ask you, what is the buzz out there? What is the emotion, the feeling out there with this uh, Terrence Crutcher issue? Well, I mean, honestly, part of what, well, what I, part of what I do too is I am very heavily in social activism. And one of the things is that a lot of people don't realize this is the third person within like less than six months. You know, we had, um, you know, the, the young man with the last name Harris that was killed in the middle of the street less than six months ago. We have the older gentleman that was choked inside the jail and they laughed and watched him die. And then now we have Terrence Crutcher. So th- this isn't, this is like something that's becoming to the point where it's almost like what happened in Charlotte is it, getting to that point, I think, across the country because people are tired. You know, people are tired of being treated less than just because of the color of their skin. You know what I mean? Like that that right there is to me is is beyond ridiculous that if I was to do that to you, I would be under the jail. All they would need is video. But if a police officer does it to me, the video, well, we don't know what happened that what led up to that. Well, no, they're not above the law. You know, they're supposed to be the example of the law. So we have to hold them to the if not to those standards, then we have to hold them a little bit above those standards, meaning that they should know the law to, to a T. So if they mess up, they should be held a lot more accountable than your average citizen because that's their job. You know what I mean? Have you ever shot a gun before? Actually, I have not. Not since okay. I was, well, I take that back. I have. Oh, you got I'm a not, body? You got a body? <laughs> got a couple, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> couple of deer bodies. <laughs> <She said>, actually. <laughs> I mean, I have, because I used to hunt with my dad whenever I was younger, because I am a country girl. Okay. So, I mean, I, I used to hunt when I was younger, but as far as in my adult life, no, I have not. All right, um, I went to a gun range not too long ago, and the reason why I asked you that question is because, for me, it just seems, it, it doesn't even make sense when we're looking at this police brutality, specifically uh, with African-American, black people, whatever you want to call it, niggas for some, however you do it. All right, so... Um, He's stupid. <laughs> all right, so why, like it to me, it just seems like one shot is enough to control somebody, especially like if you're trained, if you're a trained officer, like I'm not a trained shooter, right? I, I'm yeah. not a shooter, you know what I mean? But it seems like to slow uh, any human being down with training, it should only take like one shot. I want to say this real quick though. Yeah. For people, because, you know, a lot of times and I, people will sit there and they say, oh, well, you know, if people would have just, if they would have just, you know, complied with the officer's orders nice. and this, that, and the third. I mean, uh, going along with that, I just want to say racism is real because I myself have been a victim here in Oklahoma of police brutality because I said, it was something simple. It happened three years ago. I took my sons, well, I let my sons go to the mall. Um, you know, they had money. They They weren't up there just being homeless you know they were up there they had money (laughs) to spend and the police didn't like the fact that they were gathered together and uh you know in the in the food court and decided to arrest my son who was 14 at the time so I get the call to go down there and you know my son told me after the fact of the things that they were saying to them I mean my son at the time was 14 years old and these police officers are calling him the N-word, you know, telling them he's what? ugly, all kinds of stuff. And w- But when I get there, you know, there's two officers, you know, trying to play that good cop, bad cop situation. Um, and, you know, we're, we're super aggressive and screaming in my face and all kinds of stuff. And so, so after I told them I knew my rights and I knew the law and that this is a child, I'm here. You Like, because they literally gave me eight minutes to come pick up my son. And um, so I was like, you know, I know the law. Whoop de whoop. Anyways, the guy tells me the officer. Now this is a police officer who says, "Oh, so you want to be uppity? Well, we're about to embarrass you." And so they wanted to walk me out in handcuffs as if I had done something wrong. So, and you know me, D. You know I'm not going out like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I ain't going <laughs> so, out like Willie Lump. I'm not going out like Willie Lump Lump. <laughs> so I said, "Oh, well, you picked the wrong one because I don't get embarrassed." So I turned on my camera. 
and I said, you know, oh, you want to embarrass me? I was like, officer, and I zoomed in on his cam, I mean, on his badge, and I was like, officer, blah blah blah. You want to embarrass me? Is that what you said? So you want to make it seem like I'm stealing? Is that what you're trying to do? So I'm loud at this point. I'm walking through the mall loud to draw attention so i'm like oh so you're trying to make it seem like all black people steal whenever you guys are beating up on a 14 year old boy in the back is that what you're doing so we're walking out and then i get to the front and he says that i'm he said i was you know banned from the property so i said that's fine i'm not coming back to this anyway but my son better be okay and he better be where he's supposed to be or else it's going to be trouble so i'm recording this whole time so then he says that's it you're going to jail uh runs after me right so i'm like i'm not doing anything i'm not going to jail because i'm on i'm in the park a lot at this point and so my son my other my older son comes out and you know he's trying to run up and i was like no don't because i didn't want them to do anything to my son so i give them come and give him my camera and i just told him to keep recording they pepper sprayed me literally this close to my face what? Me right in the face the officer then starts punching me what punching on me talking about i was resisting arrest so after the they officer, pepper sprayed you after they pepper oh sprayed my me, gosh me. so then they try to arrest my older son and they kept asking him his name and i was like i didn't say his name i said don't tell them your name you are not under arrest don't tell them your name so by this time my friend um who was there with my son in the first place came out and you know she's trying to get everything situated so because my son my older son had the phone and recorded it all they arrested him as well so all three of us are arrested my um friend has the phone but um well she has the keys but she doesn't have my phone so let me tell you what they did they arrest us all you know i go to jail my sons go to cic my mom got my sons out and i had to get bonded out or whatever in the meantime though this is why I keep a lock on my phone now because I didn't at the time. Oh no. They got the phone from my son after they arrested him and deleted that video. When I got my phone back, all my pictures from my gallery and stuff was gone. And they tried my my son's phone was locked because they thought that he got it on his, but he had a, at the time he had an iPhone, I had an Android at the time. But um his phone was locked. So they couldn't get in it, but it had, you know how you try so many times with the wrong password and right. lock it. His phone was locked to where we had to actually go in and reset it to where we can get back in it. Dang. So, so it's real. Police brutality is real. They don't discriminate women, children, whatever. Like I found out the stuff that they said to my son. I'm, again, he's 14. 14 years old and they're telling him i bet you don't get no cooch and all this i mean like really derogatory stuff to my son and he's he's a 14 year old boy you know what i mean at the time and the the charges that they trumped up was so ridiculous like i ended up having to pay like 1500 dollars in fines because it was what they say uh resisting arrest they gave me an assault on a police officer charge that's so terrible yeah all of that for nothing for for two kids shopping at the mall was there like an end result to it or is it no is it... and this, see this is this is why a lot of people get upset about the fact that they say oh well there's good officers out there now there were because when i said at the time because i was still a journalist i was like oh yeah this is i was like y'all hope y'all know y'all got the right one i'm a journalist da, 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 da. and i'm this is going to be on the news so you know the officer they sent the supervisor there and i and i reported it like it wasn't no oh I didn't, no i was like yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> them those, those two right there you know i'm pointing out who they are and everything so i get the police report and the names on it is wrong mm. it's not the actual officers the names were made up that's number one number two so of course i couldn't trace the situation back number two was there was officers that you know came to me later and was like i was there and i saw it but you didn't do nothing you know what I'm saying? like you see i'm a woman getting punched on if now this if this was some if this was me and you in a domestic dispute you would have been all over the ground <laughs> you know i mean seriously like but this but it's two it's an it's two officers you know punching on a woman and and pepper spraying and pepper spray after i'm already pepper sprayed like and they didn't just like they hit me in the face with like that that lethal crowd kind like this wasn't no little that you would carry in your purse this was one of those crowd joints like it, it i was hurt for a cool minute you know and um it, it's just it just was mind-blowing that people saw this and the only ones that really spoke up to be honest with you were 
the bystanders, you know what I'm saying? Like the, it, the people that was there, they was like, that's messed up, get off her, you know, and everything else. So that's, I do believe that there's good police officers out there. What I suggest is that they start speaking up more because you can't see stuff like that and just be like, oh, it's protocol. You know what I mean? Yeah, Martin Luther King, he said it best. He's, uh, it's not about police brutality, but he said about racism, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to see racism and not say or do anything is to be a racist. Exactly. So for those bad cops you're talking about that won't speak out, you know, that's that's bad. Exactly. So and, I mean, how we, we can thread this into hip hop because my next question was, how far do you think this uh, Meek Mill and, and game situation is going to go? I know you're in it. Like, <laughs> I know, right? I know you know what's going on. So, like, well, what do you – the, the how far is this going to go? I don't think – honestly, I don't think it's going to get to the point where it's physical. I just don't. Because with everything that's going on right now, I think that kind of subdued a little bit of the, the anger that was, that was fueled behind it from game's aspect of it. However, I do think that it is going to continue to play out on record, um, at least until game's album drops. Nah. <laughs> so who who do you, who who's who do you got in this battle? Who if it is a battle, who do you got? Lyrically speaking, I'm gonna have to go with the game because <laughs> the game the game is hitting him like Drake did. He's coming real he's coming real comical with it. You know, just just his 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 antagonistic um post on social media alone has me cracking up. You know, he he's going after everybody that's team meek. So <laughs> So if you're in it with, let's say Meek Mill's one of your clients, mm -hmm. right? Let's say Meek Mill's one of your clients. What do you tell him to do at this point? You just said game is lyrically better. I don't right. know if you'll say this if that was your, if Meek was your well, client. Well, if, if Meek was or my would client, you? I would. If, if Meek was my client, now lyrically better, I, I don't say, I don't think that the game is lyrically better than Meek Mill. I think that lyrically speaking, they're on the same level. When it comes to those jabs, those comical jabs, yeah, the game is winning. Cause we saw that in we saw that in his battle against Drake. Meek's not a comical guy, no. you know, and that's why Drake won. Drake was hitting him with the, that troll status, you know, and that's what the game is doing. He's coming with the with the troll aspect of it as well as lyrical content. So it's kind of booting Meek right on the battle there. But if Meek was my client, I, you know, I would suggest that to take the angle of making him look childish. That's what I would suggest because I would say, you know, what you, and that's how you, tr that's how you shut trolls down. You know, I would, say, <laughs> <laughs> I would just tell them like, you know, I would say come at the angle of why you worried about this bull crap to sell records and I'll make sure I put the sell records part in there. You know, there's real people dying in the street and you know, what, what can you say after that? Now you look childish. Now you look like the guy that just is trying to be, you know, the clown and, and now he's going to back off. You know what I mean? So that's what I would have suggested that Meek do, but especially because, you know, he, he's not, he's not a troll. So his troll, he's, he's the guy that he tries to come back hard, but then it's like, Ooh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know? Is, is Meek going to be one? Of, yo, it's so crazy how much I appreciate. I've never, the way it, I like, is Meek going to be here 10 years from now? Like seriously, because we've do. seen careers end. I do believe he will. Here's why. Because lyrically speaking, you know, Meek Mill is a great rapper. I mean, he is. Come on right. now. We still, we still get pumped to, to Dreams and Nightmare. You know what I'm saying? So you, hold up, wait a minute. Everybody start. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Cause you know, that's that, that's the ultimate hustlers anthem. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, I think just for that song alone, he's going to make it. But besides that, um, he still has great music. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's one of those few artists that can create turn up music and it be lyrical. You know what I mean? So I, I think that if, if he stays away from beef and, and entertaining trolls, then I think he'll make it. But if he, if he keeps trying to engage in this new, in the troll, which is the new beef, I mean, the new battling, he's going to lose. Now, if he does traditional battles where, you know, it's rhyme for rhyme back and forth without all this extra, then he, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be okay. But if it comes to trying to match Petty, mm -mm, he, he going to fall out. All right. So you brought his name up. He was talking about Drake. I don't think I've ever asked you this question. I'm curious to know how you felt when Drake posted your article about was it Mac Dre's mother crediting yeah, Drake he with inspiration? Mm -hmm. Like, how, how did you feel about that? Because I thought that was pretty huge, and I'm on the outside looking in. Of course, I can't feel what you feel, 
But right. how did that make you feel? Did, were you like, wow, my, you know, it's getting out, the, the word of what I'm doing is getting out there? Or was you just like, ah, uh, that's supposed to happen? Like, how did you feel about it when it first, when you first saw it? When I saw that, oh, honestly, I didn't see it. And that's the crazy part about it. Cause I, and I was on Drake's Instagram. That's the crazy part about it is, uh, cause I was uh, getting some stuff for another article that I was writing about him. But um, my editor, at the time she hit me up and she was like so you know you made uh, you're official and i was like what do you mean <laughs> and she was like yeah, that's <laughs> right she was like drake put you on his instagram and i was like what so i go to the instagram and then i see it and my name was there and i was like what hey <laughs> i'm all Dr drake's up in there and on so <laughs> <laughs> but now it really felt good just because um when you find out that you know the people that you're writing about are is are actually actively still reading your because i mean I, that's not the first time that that's happened as far as like me knowing that um rappers and celebrities read what i actually write but on a so, level like that well, though well like it, it, Drake, come on. that's 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 awesome because you know that's like jay-z reasonable doubt no not even reasonable doubt that would be he's nowhere near as hot as jay-z in my opinion nor right. should he mentioned in the same breath but right now you gotta give it to him he's like i mean you it haven't was, been that's some big records that's a big eyeball looking at you it that's is it, 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 it was it was super dope because it's like after that, you know, DJ Khaled retweeted some stuff I wrote about him. Well, it, Major Key, he gave you a major, uh, some special cloth. He, he gave me, he gave me the special cloth okay. with the key. You right. know? <laughs> and then, um, uh, another person that did it too was Mad Skills. The oh, legendary. Yeah. yeah, he did. He not only did he post about it, he posted part one and two of the article on his Instagram and linked it in his bio. So it was, it was dope. All right, that's what's up. So, uh, we're talking about artists and. Could you just give everybody, because you it, it's not just musicians that you're currently working with. You also uh, work with singers. I mean, not just musicians, but rappers and singers. Is that safe to say? Yes. Okay. What exactly, uh, the last time we spoke, you gave me three things that you look for in your clients mm -hmm. uh, that you, you know, choose to work with. You don't right. just obviously work with everybody at this point. Right. Maybe you never worked with everybody. At, at, no? I mean, because the reason being is because part of wanting to change, you know, the way hip hop sounds and, and, and really kind of make sure that you're putting out quality is, is that you have to, and it's hard, but you, you have to value the quality and the content over the dollar. You know what I mean? So it, it was rough. It was, it was times where I wanted to be like, you rent and 10, <laughs> come on, you know? <laughs> no, rent and 10, no, you didn't, brown sugar, stop it. <laughs> Oh, no, you did But, you know, then I was like, okay, you're doing this for the culture. You're doing this for the culture. But, um, yeah, the three things that I look for whenever I'm whenever I'm seeing if, if uh, this person, you know, I want to represent this person or not, because I hate saying if they're worthy to be my client because, I mean, we're all on the same page. But right. um, so if I'm looking to represent a person uh, is if they're original, you know, I look at their drive because you definitely, definitely, definitely have to be a hustler to work with me because once once you come with me it's it's upward from that point because i'm grinding you know i your, your hustle has to match my hustle so if i'm team no sleep you, you can't be sleep while i'm not sleeping nah. you know? so <laughs> and then um and then the third thing that i look for is it, it's definitely you have to do you have to do it for the love like you have to have love for what you're doing you can't say well i want to be a rapper um to make it to be this like you you, you have, whatever you're what coming to me to represent has to be what you ultimately want to do and then everything else is secondary because if this is just your jumping off point we'll come at me whenever you to the where you want to jump off to and then we'll get that popping because you know too many people that's one of the reasons why quality is lacking as well is because too many people want to say well i'll just do this until i get here well no why don't you take the steps you need to do to get there in the right way to the you know to your desired end goal instead of saying you know well i'm just gonna work i mean i'm just gonna rap until i you know become an actor so i can or I, so i can get the fame to become an actor well no your ultimate goal is to be an actor so take the classes and take that route instead of tarnishing something in hip-hop just so you can get what you want to you know where you want to go all right speaking of these uh things that you look for in your clients let's just uh give a quick moment of silence to Polo the Pave God. One of my faves.
Feeling voluntary, immature, military grade. Haters talk from a glass house, then they always broke. Just another face. Back, back from the barricades with your false statements and your double faces. I don't smoke, but enjoy yourself. I got friends up in high place. I pull up. All right, so that is Lights Out by Polo the Pave God. Yes. It's on his Instagram. You can actually check him out on Instagram at Polo the Pave God. I'm curious to know what made you choose to work with uh, Polo the Pave God? One thing that I loved about working with Polo and why I chose to really work with him was because of the simple fact that he is the perfect blend of old school and new school. Like, you know what I mean? Because uh, he has that drive of if I need to sell CDs, I'm going to sell them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But and he like working in that, that work ethic, like it's just it's just that perfect blend, you know, because so many new artists that I meet, you know, they come in and they think, OK, that, I got it, especially of his caliber. You know, they'll be like, oh, I got a hit record. So I'm just going to do what you do. I'm going to just sit back, you know what I mean? <laughs> And, and, and he's like, nah, okay, we got this one. So next I'm in the studio. Like he's always in the studio, you know, and he, like, he's one of those people. You remember how you hear a lot of the, the veterans now, they'll say like, well, whenever I first started, I had a nine to five and then I would yeah. go to the studio. That's literally what he does. He's, you know, he has his nine to five. Then from there he's in the studio and then, you know, he's a father. He's a very active father. So it's like, this dude is, he killing. He, Where is he out of? He's out of Oklahoma. Out of Oklahoma. And you obviously have an instrumental part in his uh, direction of his career choices or, I guess, career path. Uh, what's, w w what should we be looking out for from Polo the Pave God? And where do you see him in the music industry, let's say, five years from now? What do you guys have planned? Um, the main thing that I think for Polo, his album, drops, his album is getting ready to drop. Uh, what's the name of it? It's actually Polo the Pave God. Okay. So his album is Polo the Pave God. Um, his album is going to be dropping um, at the end of October. So I'll be on the lookout for that uh, within the next five years. I mean, honestly, I think he's going to be, he's going to be on level of Jay-Z. Mm. That's what I think. Like, I definitely think that um, Jay-Z status is not, Jay-Z status is not um, something that is light. I mean, that you can give somebody lightly, but Polo is definitely one of those people that can reach that status quickly. You heard that hove. What, <laughs> Rock Nation? Uh, title? Title? What? What? Title? Right. Because, I mean, he's, like I said, he's his work ethic is so sick. So it's, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's, it's just his work ethic is so sick. And you can definitely see him being amongst those people and being amongst, amongst those peers because, you know, he's, he, he has that ability to reach both young and old. And I haven't met one person yet that has heard his project and hasn't been like yo i want to work with this person you know what i mean like he's infectious and we haven't had uh artists like that in a long time in hip-hop you know what i mean all right so you have uh there's a lot of streaming that's going on mm -hmm. and i the music was a little bit it was consumed a little bit differently uh and artists was getting paid a lot better i guess that i guess that's from the outside in. that's what everybody's saying the pay is different and you have to have other things going on uh i was also interested to know what's the most meaningful accomplishment in your career thus far <sighs> there's so many um i would say i feel like i'm like zooming in on my. i don't face. normally do this i asked for one but since you said there's many why don't you give us two Okay, I would say the most meaningful thing in my career would be having legends uh, in hip hop come after me. Um, you know, Keith Murray is a client of mine. Uh, Mr. Cheeks is a newly acquired uh, client. Oh, of Mr. Mine. Cheeks. Yep, and then um, Camp Lowe is another client that um, has reached out to work with me as well. So to to know my name is moving through hip hop like that it speaks volumes because you know to to work with the vets especially like it's they they know the game you know what i'm saying like the vets done been there done that they that's like that's like being taken advantage of a thousand times with that i could turn 500 to 5000 scam so you know what you could smell it a mile away so when you come when somebody comes authentic you know it you know what i mean 
So the fact that they came at me and then we've had conversations and they're like, yo, I want to work with you. That tells me like, yo, I'm doing something good because they, they know authenticity. You know what I'm saying? Like they Absolutely. know it's legit. And so I think that that would be definitely um, a, a career moment. Um, number two would be, uh, I would have to just, just say, it doesn't have to do with meeting anybody, but just me starting my own business full time you know, going and doing this without an actual nine to five, you know, that's scary. <laughs> you go from having income that's set Man. to relying on clients, like what? So I think that, um, that th those are the two highlight moments, just because of the fact of it's me saying, number one, I got that seal of approval that my, that being who I am pays off. And then number two, it literally pays off because I haven't had to have a nine to five. Okay, and I remember the question I was going to ask. I was curious to know his al uh, Polo the Pave Gods album is dropping late October, and mm -hmm. where will we be able to uh, purchase that album? You'll be able to purchase it purchase it everywhere digitally and brick and mortar. Okay, fantastic. And you, can, if you send me the link or whatever the best contact information, I'll put it in the show details, uh, right. so they could so we could stay tuned for that. Uh, another question is, what's your take on, wait, first and foremost, should marijuana be legalized or no? Yes. It should be. <laughs> I do think it should. All right, and do you puff the Chiba? <laughs> Not in a long time. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think last time, the last time I actually smoked was 2008. Yeah, 2008 was last time. Okay, so is smoking marijuana normal for great singers and rappers, or be, is it frowned upon? To be honest with you, it's not frowned upon, but it's not as normal as you think. Like, some of, like I know you see a lot of these kids out here, like these little young rappers, that, that think that, you know, doing all this stuff is part of the lifestyle, but it's mm -hmm. really not. No, I've I seen an uh, interview with this young man. His name was King, K-Y-N-G-G -G or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the dude was so high. Like, it was sad looking at it. Like, <laughs> like, seriously, it was like one of those, damn, homies. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Like, because he was, and he, I think he's like only like 19. And he looked like 50 years old. And it's funny. It's not <laughs> funny, but it's funny because it reminds me of something that this guy said. He was like, why is it that people are, are in their, you know, 30s and up? are looking younger than these kids that are like 19 and 20. He was like, y'all need to chill out on them drugs because it's got y'all aging in dog years. You know what I'm saying? That lean, scissor, yeah, them pills. Yeah, them, them pills. And I mean, he's got these kids looking old. And so I know that's not marijuana, but I'm just saying. So to answer the question, is it's not as normal as you think in the industry. However, it's not frowned upon either. I do think that um, marijuana should be legal. Um, I think that with it with its legality though that we need to stop being boxed out of being able to sell it you know we're because I, I, after all we're the ones put the, the footwork in yeah so you know um i think it, that it sh definitely should and i think that i would love to see more black owned dispensaries there, now i think people confuse weed advocates like the red mans and the two chains and the little Wayne, Wiz Khalifa, Wiz Khalifa, Snoop, Snoop. Yeah. like they but they actually like that's their business too. A lot of people, yeah. <laughs> like seriously, like you know they they develop. Said, but that's their products. business. Too. It <laughs> is like it is like Red and Meth just developed the app to to um to locate the best weed dispensaries with the best grain. Like that's their their uh, Snoop has the rolling papers, so that's really their business. So because they're weed connoisseurs. They're going into business to make it to where they can continue to keep that up every day. That's something different. But if you're trying to be on the level of a Jay-Z or a Drake where you're, you know, inking million dollar deals for it with Samsung and well, Lil Wayne had Samsung too, but you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to ink million dollar deals with Apple and Samsung and um, come out with your own liquor brand and, and clothing line and all that different type of stuff, you have to be able to maneuver not high in the boardroom. You know, and I, all of them don't have that ability that Snoop and Two Chains has. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And I don't care who you are. High is high. Right. You know, like, I'm on this interview right now. High. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be cute. It would be like no one would take the, the joint <laughs> serious. You know what I'm saying? Like no one would take it serious. They'd be like, oh, she don't know what she's talking about because she's high. You know what I mean? And I think that if the same way that you would want your representation to be 
when they're when they're rep working for you should be the same way that you are the majority of the time. What do you have going on that we don't know about that we that we should know about? Whether it be uh, an event coming up, or you have and well, we know about Polo the Pave God's album coming out. Uh, what articles or blogs or what do we need to know about? Keith Murray is going to be performing at A3C. Okay. With the big 96 show in Atlanta. That's going to be October the 8th. It's a Def Squad reunion. That's awesome. Def um, Squad? Def Squad. Um, we also have, uh, I mean, I have the two, two, the part one and two interview with Skills Up that went up last week. Um, he's going on Facebook Live today, matter of fact. And then, um, let me see. Uh, the new venture that I have jumping off is um, I'm working on, I already do some, part of my business is social media management. That's where I deal with more of the fortune 500 clients and things of that nature. Um, but now I've actually branched out with a partner of mine. His name is Michael Harris. Um, we've teamed up to create a business called the plug. And what that is, is that cause not every artist can afford um, to hire a publicist full time. Like, you know, cause it is an investment. So not everybody has that. Sometimes if you're just starting out, you just need someone to write a professional bio and you may or maybe manage their social media for you or something. So we actually launched a company where we're doing that social media management, talent development, if that's what you want to do. Um, we're kind of filling in that gap for A&R, which is what I do as well, but it's kind of for the basics. Um, but the good thing about the plug, which is my new business that, um, we're venturing off to as a subdivision of Tiffany and co is that, um, we have partnered up with cool TV with a streaming service. So now they already have cool TV already has the app launched live in, um, Asia. Now it's at 160 million views, one point, I mean, I'm sorry, 160 million subscribers, 1.6 million views a month. Um, I'm sorry, not a month, but a, yeah, a month right now because it's a new app. And then they're going to be bringing it over here to the United States. But we've partnered with them to offer that service um, to provide content and videos strictly from a lot of our clients today. So we sold that deal today. All right. You, you, so you got the plug going on. That's the plug. <laughs> All right. So the plug and your partner is Michael Harris. Mm -hmm. All right. So shout out to Michael Harris. and. Hello. <laughs> uh, all right so this is really good to know and i'll make sure to put all those details in the show details so you guys could stay uh stay abreast of that you work with so many people and i can only imagine you're going to be working with a lot more people uh in the mainstream area for sure as well as you know that's the goal <laughs> yeah that is the goal and i i know you will get there and i was who's somebody that you haven't worked with yet that you would really, really, really love an opportunity to work with? I would say I would love, I mean, everybody's going to say Jay-Z and Beyonce. That's a given. But um, I would realistically love to work with Chris Brown. Like, I would like to work with Chris Brown. I would like to work with, like, I'm one of those people. Why Chris Brown? Because, because Chris Brown, number one, he is so talented. Like this dude is a quadruple threat. Yeah. And he, but he needs the the people around him that can kind of, you know, keep him normal and hone those skills. So I, I would definitely love to work with the Chris Brown because what people don't realize why, because people are like, oh, why do these, a man needs a man, you know, manager or a man needs to be around. That's not true. Men, whenever they have a woman that's around them that they're not messing with or anything like that, but if they have a woman that's there, men, it kind of automatically makes a man act right. So if you are there, like, and, and you're telling this person and you're encouraging him every day and you really believe in what they're doing, it helps them to become what they're supposed to become or take it to another level. I mean, I don't think that women realize that we possess that type of power is that it's not necessarily saying that you got to sleep with the person. It's not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is not necessarily saying just any woman can do it either. But a lot of times if a man is around a woman, it automatically, automatically makes him want to straighten up, especially if she's about her business. That's why a lot of times, you know, that you'll see a woman manager managing a man and things of that nature. Now men are there of course for the road cause you got to shape them up and dudes kind of can get a little reckless or whatever. But mm -hmm. all in all, I think it is good to have a woman manager on your team as well. 
um, because it helps get you, you know, it, it kind of helps with that, that aspect of she don't play, you know, but um, as back to what I was saying, Chris Brown, I, I definitely think that that would be an aspect that I could bring to him kind of like that, that big sister, come on, you need to act right type of situation. And I could take him to the next level because like I said, with his painting, his acting, his dancing, his, you know, his lyrical ability, whether basketball, it's, like this dude is all <laughs> over the place. Great. You no. Know? And I'm, that's why I don't understand. I'm like, dude, you could be doing so much more now if you would just get the right team. You know what? Speaking of Chris Brown, I think when we first, the t- around the time we met, uh, his that, first that song, police. Yo, that song, Yo, yeah. Uh, all right, last question. Oh, wait, I thought we were talking about last interview. Yeah, no, we, when we first linked up, Yo was out. I- yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> but we had, inter- I had interviewed, this is the crazy thing about Chris Brown. I had interviewed him. Um, whenever he that song was out uh it was my one no it wasn't my first it was like my fourth interview that i had done for all hip-hop and uh so i'm going there it's, it's a lot you know at the time he like 16 years old and i'm 23 mm-hmm. but um it was like a line like around the block for this kid so i'm you know walking through the kids like excuse me excuse me and they're like mm-hmm. um you know little girls who she thinks she is and this little girl said she too old to be trying to see chris brown anyway i was like <laughs> that was the first time I got called old by a child. You know. What I'm All right, so that just earned you two questions. I had one, but now you just triggered another one. So <laughs> two last questions. One is, I was trolling your Twitter page, oh, and I saw that you tweeted hashtag punk ass <laughs> about famous Dex being caught on camera beating the socks off a woman, mm-hmm. but. You didn't really say how you personally felt about it. How do you feel about upcoming rappers not being able to control themselves to the extent of beating a woman? Well, hashtag punk ass. Hashtag punk ass. Because to me, number one, that's unacceptable. If he was my client, he'd have got dropped immediately. Because, mm. um, you know, if, you're, if you can't control your emotions that much to where you're laying hands on somebody on camera, then to me... <laughs> you're a loose cannon you know what i'm saying now i'm not saying he should have and tina in the, in the you know in the back room or nothing, eat but, the damn cake you know what i'm saying like i mean but to me that's just it's crazy because if what people don't realize is that a lot of times those type of personalities that will abuse a woman they have a lack of respect for authority as well so i don't have time like i just and and a lot of people don't have time either. Now I'm sure he's not gonna run up on no guy like that. So that that would be one of those instances he need a man like a drill sergeant around him. But he would be dropped as my client because there's no coming back from that. Like it's not he. I mean the way did you see the video? No, I didn't see it yet. The way he was wilding out, like it wasn't no situation like oh this got out of hand like the elevator situation with uh Ray Rice with Ray Rice. This was a situation where it literally like it was Ike and Tina like he tried to go <laughs> you know what I'm saying like like this was all some normal stuff he just happened to get caught. So I I just don't I don't think that that's a good look and I think that everything that's going on as far as <laughs> against our community in general like yo you you wilding like <laughs> you tripping like, so, I, don't, I really don't think that's a good look yeah i don't think that's a good one at all I, you know and he, i just couldn't like he uh, hashtag punk ass was my <laughs> and and he would have been hashtag dropped from tiffany Co. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hashtag you're dropped right <laughs> hashtag out of here you know what i mean no, i can't do it <laughs> all right last question is uh i was li- i was creating a video uh, mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago and i heard this song i actually thought it was bobby schmurder i know this sounds stupid but i thought it was bobby schmurder and i thought they picked up one of his archive then just started playing it because We're talking, Ooh. yo <laughs> i'm listening to that song yo i thought it was first i thought it was somebody in his camp and then I'm doing the dance, like the first time the I heard it, dance, like, I did it too. Oh, oh, yeah, that's my joint. Oh, that's how do you feel? I saw an interview with her on Angie Mart. No, was it? An- I think it was Angie Martinez the other day. Young Ma, uh huh. Yeah, and I, I really, really feel good about her. I don't know if she's gonna be the next big thing. I mean, she is right now. I'm talking about yeah, long term. And you know, you know when Beyonce used your use your joint yeah. in a video, it's official. And she yeah. was 
Beyonce used in her birthday video. So. You can't hear that song and start. Uh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Like exactly, man. No. It's, just, it's so. Good. I mean, I love the fact that she did it. Now, you know, a lot of do a lot of people are hating because you know she's a female or whatever. But I mean, I love it. I think that she she owns she owns it. You know what I'm saying? She owns her sexuality. She owns the 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 the, the swag that she's bringing with that record. You know, it's it's a cool little like it's one of those cool little mellow joints. You know, and I just I love the everything the production the way she's spitting is so on point like yeah. that that record at first that ain't gonna front when i first heard it, i was kind of like who is this because i only heard the only heard the hook i didn't hear the, <laughs> the lead up to it but then once i listened to the song i was like yo this is dope like it was like oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> they call her heffany <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right this is good. You, uh, for those again, listen, uh, Tiffany and company, and also now we got some new information. She has the plug, the plug. with uh, Michael Harris. You've written for Hip Hop Wired. Uh, you've did work with XL XXL Magazine, Hip Hop Wired, Double XL, All Hip Hop, The Source, BET.com. You name it, I've been there. Currently, I'm an editor at Respect Magazine and still contributing writing at, contributor contributing writer. At Take your time Hip-Hop. now, right? <laughs> Just so much going on, you know. <laughs> contributing writing at The Source, um, Tiffany and Co., um, which is my publicity, marketing, and media. We doing branching off into A and R work. Um, and then the plug with social media management and really kind of helping artists get started. So it's a lot. Where do we where do we connect with you? How do uh, whether they're artists or somebody that just loves hip hop and wants to stay connected with uh, a pioneer, a new pioneer like yourself? Where where can where is all the uh, platforms that we can connect with you? Everything TFFH the writer. Now, of course, my business page is T and Co. But I mean, if you want to interact with me, troll whatever. It's uh, TFFH, the writer at Twitter, Gmail, Yaya, whatever. We don't matter. I'm on all of it as TFFH, the writer. Instagram is popping. It's popping. All right. Now, uh, as we get out of here, is there anything, as we were talking, is there anything that maybe I did, a question that I didn't ask you where you would have wanted to give an answer or you was answering a question and you said, oh, man. I wish I would have said, I, I wanted to say that or get that point across. What would that be, if anything? I would say that any artist that is wanting to, you know, be taken serious in the industry, uh, it's, it's two things I would recommend, or well, three actually. One is make sure you do your homework um, because people can tell the difference. You know, you don't want to come out with, as your name is Jay-Z and is already a Jay-Z, nah. <laughs> you know, or LL, or LL Cool D. Nah. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I'm butter when it's cold outside. Where it's <laughs> you know what I'm hey, saying? Ten. <laughs> you know, for real, you know, we want to do your research. Um, number two is, is that don't expect um, records to pop overnight. You know, most of, a lot of people don't know that a lot of these records that seem like they popped overnight was actually being worked for like a year from Panda to No Type to, um, you know, all of them. A lot of those records where you're starting to see these, you know, these new artists coming with success, they were they were worked for a cool year before they really blew up like that. And then number three is make sure you get professionals, invest in your craft, because no one will take you serious if you're coming with half-assed work. You know, you don't want to have a solid gold project with plastic wrappers. You know uh. what I'm saying? With plastic wrapping, you know, you want to make sure that the everything represents the type of the quality of the product that you're putting out. So you want to invest in a publicist. You want to make sure that you research and find out what a manager is supposed to do. Because there's so many people that don't know what a manager actually does. Like everybody wants to be a manager, but even these so-called managers don't know what a manager does. Like, you know, my clients realistically are self-managed per se, because, and then I'm here to do on the back end to do the administrative work because at the end of the day, as a manager, a manager is supposed to invest um, money into the client. That's why they recoup 20% or up to 20% because they're the ones paying for the studio sessions. They're the one paying for the photo shoots and all that stuff. So 
if you don't, if the person isn't doing that, they're not your manager, you're self-managed. So you want to make sure that you, you research what the roles are supposed to be, but every good artist starting out independent or whatever needs a good publicist. And once they get to the point where it's hard to manage themselves, a quality manage, a quality manager with references, like have them show you somebody that's popped and then call that person and make sure you haven't gotten screwed because <laughs> there's too many people faking the funk. Like everybody right now with the internet can be anything they want to be. I've seen so many want to be publicists that don't do nothing but spam your social media. Don't have no connects, you know, <laughs> no plug, <laughs> no <laughs> nothing, you know, but they, but they out here publicists, you know, I mean, publicizing people and being a publicist and all this other stuff. And um, so just make sure you do your research and make sure you check references. So that would be my recommendation is, you know, come original, do your research, get you a team, put out quality. Well, I'm always flattered to predict the future. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on record right now. I, I can promise you, everybody that's watching this, this young lady that you just uh, heard from and saw in this interview, there's always a new wave in the hip hop industry. And hip hop has been around for a long time the only difference between now and 20 years ago is it's just spread right it's now a, it's really a culture it's not just music it's 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 there's there's rap and then there's hip hop 10 right. years from now when we look up at hip hop the same way we see all of the the, the 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 pioneers that you see right now i promise you tiffany and company the plug and anything else that she puts her hands on will be at the forefront thank you so much for being here uh, as i'm drinking coffee and we talk in business and uh i'll be seeing you soon tiff thank you you're welcome thank you so much polo the pave got late october polo. let's go <laughs> Feeling voluntary, immature, military grade. Haters talk from a glass house, then they always broke. Just another base. Back, back from the barricades with your false statements and your double faces. I don't smoke, but enjoy yourself. I got friends up in high places. I pull up. In